What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another episode of Giants Franchise. Thank you once again for joining me here today. So we just played the Cowboys. I'm not going to play the Cowboys. They're 5-6. and six, We're 9-2. and two, Currently sitting atop the NFC East. And I just don't feel like playing the Cowboys again. So even though that's maybe not your favorite thing for the franchise, I'm just not doing it. So sorry. We will be scouting, however. Hopefully scouting some good players that can potentially come onto our team in the future. As you guys may well know, the quarterback class is underwhelming. We like Thomas Farmer out of Delaware State, maybe, but he doesn't exactly have the throw power that I'm looking for. And then at the top of the class, Carter Drogue out of USC does have the throw power, but he doesn't have the accuracy that we're looking at. So it's kind of a project quarterback. Not really sure how I feel about that. Saquon Barkley hasn't been electric in recent weeks, and we're still looking for safeties. Potentially, we have the idea that someone referenced in, or mentioned in the comments, and they said that, hey, you could take Nat DeGear, cornerback out of BYU, rookie, and you could play him at free safety. Now, he is a zone-style player, but he's got decent speed. He's got decent man to be a cornerback. The problem with Nat DeGear is his block shedding is low, his hit power is low. So as a safety... I don't know if Nat DeGear would really be a natural fit for us. Now, he would play free safety, so his abilities would fit more, of course, in a strong safety. He doesn't have to come up into the box that often. He's going to be a zone primary style of safety if we decide to do that next season. It won't be this season. He's a 76 overall. The problem, in my opinion, is we, he just doesn't have the run support capability of being a really talented safety. Now, his tackling actually isn't bad. His pursuit isn't terrible. I think the block shed really lets him down. What's Obi Amelifanwu sitting at? His block shedding's low, too. Pursuit and tackling a lot better, but then the zone coverage is not there. Obi Amelifanwu will be the starting free safety for now. We didn't trade anything for him. It was garbage, essentially, what we traded in order to acquire Obi Amelifanwu. So he's expendable, if you will. But we do have some players to upgrade. It's two receivers, quarterback. Nobody on defense, so we are going to upgrade Odell Beckham Jr., and what do we want to upgrade for Odell? He's got good speed, fantastic overall route running and catching. We can really go any way we want with this. I'm going to go deep threat and maybe we'll get speed. Speed or catching traffic would be nice for Odell. Actually, let's do let's do slot upgrade for Odell Beckham Jr. That takes him up to a 98 overall. Show me speed. Speed would have been really nice. We get a small boost to ball carry vision. Catching traffic plus two is nice. Carrying, catching, medium route running. Odell Beckham Jr. is absolutely unbelievable. Maxed out medium, pretty much maxed out short. Deep is amazing. Spectacular catch is maxed out. Fantastic release, catching traffic, catching. Odell Beckham Jr. is just unbelievable in every facet of the game. Someone who's not quite there yet is Kyle Laletta. I will not be doing scrambler. Field general is the best for overall accuracy. So that's what we're going to be doing here. It gives us one, and it's throw accuracy mid. That goes up to an 86. So that's not really what I'm looking for, unfortunately. Howard Russell's going to be another guy we upgrade. And where are his ratings kind of best? So deep route running is going to be the main thing for him. And I do actually want that to be a lot better. Release is something I would like to see as well. So that's going to be deep threat. Deep route running, release, spectacular catch. Exactly where he thrives and gets better. He goes up to an 81 overall. As we see boost to catch and traffic, only plus one, but... Plus two to deep route running, plus two to medium, and plus one to release. So he's looking a lot better already. Route running goes up. Release goes up. When we streak Howard Russell, just go up there and get the football. And that's exactly what I'm looking for from him. Other than that, nothing crazy. We are going to scout, though. I'm not really sure I even did any of that. Gilbert Simon out of Arkansas doesn't look terrible for the fifth round. Now, remember, we don't really have a ton of picks outside of the first round. So we are looking at the top of the draft class for our best players and if we see somebody down the line, all right, we'll look into them. But so far, the talent looks to be uh, few and far between, unfortunately. Take a look at Carlos Kershaw. Power back. Looks pretty good. We'll have to see what his power ends up being as far as, uh, you know, strength at the combine speed. Those things are going to be quite important as well. But I am going to simulate against the Dallas Cowboys. I just, I don't care to play the game. We do end up beating them to advance to 10-2 and two as we win 21-9. to nine. Let's see the final numbers in that game. Kyle Aletta, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Dak also, no interceptions. Kyle Aletta was sacked once, but Dak Prescott went down six times. That's a pressure that we don't find in the franchise whatsoever. 
Saquon Barkley uh, lets a little bit off the gas pedal here, only 74 yards, but didn't have a ton of attempts. No touchdowns for him, broke a few tackles. Evan Ingram led our team in uh, catches. Looks like yards as well, and touchdowns. We also have DeMar Jacobs, the rookie out of South Carolina, getting his first career touchdown. Love to see that. The sack was led up by rookie center Logan Robeson. And as far as sacks goes, show me some just great stuff. David Irving looked to be dominant. Dalvin Tomlinson was good. Show me a ton of sacks. Olivier Vernon with one and a half. Dalvin Tomlinson with one. Don't take that out of context, by the way. Lorenzo Carter with one. Damon Harrison with one. Patrick Wright, the rookie out of Texas, with one. And then half a sack for Landon Collins as well. So you love to see that pressure after the quarterback. None for the Roman soldier, though. A little bit unfortunate. Also, we had a recommendation in the comment section for, uh, you know, since Roman's, you know, Pew's nickname is the Roman soldier, he has such a sick nickname. Let's customize him a little bit to kind of reflect that, you know, unbelievable nickname. We're going to make sure he looks, you know, as good as he's supposed to play. Funnily enough, he also gets a skill point. Any on offense? No. But Roman Pugh gets a skill point. We were just talking about him, and that is not who Roman Pugh is. But let's see what we want to do. I think I'm going to go right back into Power Rusher. He has 91 power move. Just, you know, get him better in what he's best at. Get that up. Show me a ton. Show me plus three. We don't get power move at all. That's so frustrating. That's the only thing I want. <laughs> Give me plus to power move. We get big boost to pursuit. Uh, I don't really care. Ellis offered... We'll go up to a 79 overall run stopper, might as well. If we get a plus one to speed, that'd be awesome, but I really doubt it. Plus one to pursuit, plus two to tackle. Uh, nothing too crazy there. All right, Roman Pugh, I have some ideas here. So far, he's got pretty much nothing going on, but he does have the cool face mask. What we're going to do, he's got the Rydell Revolution Speed. I think we're going to go Dark Visor on him. We're going to go Heavy Eye Paint, which you can barely see. I think, it's, I think it's probably pretty good. And then we're going to go... We're going to give him a shooter sleeve in red. Because I think it looks just absolutely sick. I don't. I think the no gloves is good. And, um... Yeah, I think he looks a little bit cooler now. It's my opinion, but I think you guys might agree. Time for more scouting. Going to primarily focus on the first round here. That's where the bulk of our picks are. And we are going to look on the offensive line. And I'm not opposed to scouting halfback for a backup running back at some point. Because we don't really have one of those. And this is a running back class that seems to be pretty loaded in terms of, uh, you know, just pure talent. It's a shame, however, that we don't necessarily need a running back. We have Saquon Barkley. But there are five first-round caliber running backs, it appears. Weird timing. We're also not going to play the Packers, but we will play the Bills. A lot of simulating going on in this episode as we beat the Packers. As we move on to 11 and 2, 24-17 is your final score as that game took place. Oh, he's at Lambeau in Green Bay. So it was a close game. You know, they came back to almost win it, but, you know, Kyle Oletta held strong. Aaron Rodgers, tough day. 324, zero touchdowns, two interceptions, negative four yards throwing for the rookie out of Oklahoma State, Carter Glennon. Kyle Oletta played okay. Three touchdowns, one interception, only 162 yards, though. Saquon Barkley, again, not very involved. Curious as to why that might be. Sterling Shepard led our team in catches, had two touchdowns. Odell also with one, only on three receptions, though. Don't love that. And then as far as it goes defensively, a couple good tackles for loss. What about quarterback sacks? One for Lorenzo Carter, Damon Harrison, half a sack, and Janoris Jenkins combined for half a sack. Interceptions for... The rookie out of Nebraska, Morris DuBose, Kevin King, and the safety out of Connecticut, Obi Melifonwu. Any forced fumbles? Hopefully a few. Looks like none. Any boost for Morris DuBose after the pick? Yes, as he's the new number one cornerback. And do we want to stick with man? I think I decided that zone was the move, right? I think, I think zone's the move. It's going to be the best for our team, even if it doesn't necessarily fit the scheme. He goes up to a 90 overall in his rookie season, plus two awareness, plus two to zone coverage, and he's playing up, so that's going to be even higher. you love to see it. More scouting points, though, and this will be the episode where we give Sterling Shepard a contract extension. We also will look for more cornerbacks, maybe. We've scouted a lot of them. They're all pretty bad. What about more linebackers? Maybe a decent cover linebacker out of Baylor there. Eric Copa doesn't look terrible. West Levels is just god-awful. 
What about defensive tackle? We've pretty much done no scouting here. Lawrence Thomas out of Nebraska seems legit. Great power move. He's got good size for the position. He could be someone we target. I'm ready to negotiate with Sterling Shepard, though. BJ Goodson, I know you guys think he's deserving of a contract. He had three interceptions in the game where it was like, oh, maybe he's not going to get re-signed. Maybe he is. And that was, I believe, uh, either last episode or two episodes ago. Sterling Shepard's 25 years old. He's going to get a five-year deal worth 5.5 in salary. It's going to be $43 million over five years. Sterling Shepard accepts, so we're going to extend him here. And then BJ Goodson, I'm out on for right now. They were user picks, right? I mean, it's not anything that BJ Goodson did. It was, you know, as cocky as it may sound, it was all me. BJ Goodson didn't do much, so I'm not sure that he's the best option for our team. That will remain to be seen. I'm shocked Patrick Wright doesn't have a point. That's a little bit disappointing. Looking for skill points. And Moses Christian, special teamer, actually has one. We'll go with the scheme fit. We'll go run stopper. Maybe he'll get some action at some point. It's wearing number 97. That's a cool number. Plus three to block shed is pretty big. We'll see if that maybe makes an impact on special teams. But until then, we're going to play this full game at MetLife Stadium home against the Buffalo Bills. Only a 74 overall. I'm hoping we dominate today. This is a game where we should really fill the stat sheet. Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham Jr., Howard Russell, Sterling Shepard, Kyle Aletta. I need the offense to go off defensively. I'm looking for interceptions for the entire secondary. Jack Rabbit, Janoris Jenkins. You got Morris Dubose, of course, on the field now. Three interceptions for the rookie. Landon Collins, obviously. I want Lorenzo Carter, OV. Roman Pugh with sacks. Damon Harrison, tackle for loss. Patrick Wright, get in there. Damon, you know, Dalvin Tomlinson, along with Damon Harrison, get in there. Saquon Barkley about to have 1,700 yards. This can be a pretty big episode. All right, live here from MetLife Stadium. I will let everybody know. I will remind everyone, if you were not aware, the franchise record for rushing yards in a season, of course, for the New York Giants, is Tiki Barber with 1,860. And Saquon Barkley is closing in on that. It's pretty unbelievable. But Saquon has had back-to-back-to-back, -back -back, you know, before these last two simulated games of just pure dominance that he is in position to hit maybe 2,000 yards on the season. It will be pretty amazing if Saquon can manage to do that, but that remains to be seen. Tyrod Taylor will be the quarterback we face today. He was re-signed by the Bills. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. Uh, I do actually remember that now, but only seven running backs in NFL history have eclipsed 2,000 yards. Eric Dickerson, of course, in the lead with 21 105, Adrian Peterson, Jamal Lewis, Barry Sanders, Terrell Davis, Chris Johnson, CJ2K, and of course, the juice is loose, OJ Simpson. He killed it out there for them. For the Bills, ironically. That's a big play on second and two. BJ Goodson doing it all on his own, filling the gap, shutting down Shady for a loss. Will be third and three. Big third down here for the Giant defense. I'm going to blitz Lorenzo Carter. Hopefully Charles Clay gets picked up. Oh, he's in the flat. That is, that's not what we wanted. Kind of vacated my area there with BJ Goodson. Wanted to blitz Lorenzo Carter. That was the one area that could have beaten us. The slants killed it. First down. We're going to start dialing up some heat here. That's going to be a run to the outside. Olivier Vernon says no. Latavius Murray, nowhere to go. I really am Dr. Seuss out here. I don't even mean to. But, like, it's rhyme after rhyme after rhyme. Throw at me. That's good pressure. Roman Pugh and Olivier Vernon combined to force the incompletion. We fourth and 15 from the 45, which means the Buffalo Bills and Jordan Berry, their punter, will punt it back. To Howard Russell, the new return man for the New York Football Giants, replacing Tracy, whatever his last name was, Tracy Wallace, who was terrible. And that's a pretty good punt. Downing us at the six. Dealing with a really, really fast linebacker in Tremaine Edmonds today. Going to be difficult to maybe run the ball as much as we'd like. But there's Howard Russell. He's not great in zone coverage. We can surely throw on him. That is going to be a blitz off the left side, probably. It's going to be time to check down Saquon Barkley out of the backfield. He'll get the first down and more. 
Not a great start for Saquon Barkley, but Kyle Oletta seems to be getting in some kind of rhythm. And it's going to have to be another check down to Saquon Barkley. Also, I, I understand the fact that I, I didn't say some kind of rhythm very well. I'm really not sure what I said. I kind of blacked out for a minute there. We'll be third and six, though. Show me Evan Ingram here. Oh, Odell's going to be open. There's Odell. Kyle Oletta. Well-thrown ball. And the toe tap from Odell is perfect. And he eclipses 1,000 yards on the season. Way to go, Odell. If Evan Ingram can take the safety, if Odell Beckham Jr. can take the safety, we might have one-on-one -on -one for Sterling Shepard. But I'm going to throw it up to Odell. That's got to be a great pass, and it is! Odell Beckham Jr. lays out and makes the catch! Unbelievable! What a dime from Kyle Laletta to Odell Beckham Jr. to get us on the board here in the first quarter. Oh my goodness. That is the throw and the catch of the year so far for this giant team. Kyle Aletta put it in the absolute perfect spot. Odell doing Odell Beckham Jr. things, laying out, making the incredible catch. Oh my goodness. That is great stuff to see from this giant team here early. Defensive stops and then converting, turning it into points on offense. Seven plays, 94 yards in about three minutes. And we are doing great. Morris Dubose, as you'll see, is now playing on the right side of your screen. As he is the new CB1. Found that pretty notable. But Obi Melifonwu does not allow LaShawn McCoy to go anywhere. He loses a yard. And they are just short of the line to gain. They're going to punt it again. As we have Howard Russell maybe able to have a shot to return this time. Of course, the ball was punted out of bounds. The previous... Previous... Uh, Punts. Really gotta cut that. Alright, Howard Russell. Good shot to do some damage here. There's a spin back, and it's a good one. Howard Russell trying to beat him to the outside. Can't quite do it. Dude, I love Howard Russell on the fade here. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some type of mix up there. Somebody's gonna be open. It's kind of like a levels concept on the outside. And we're gonna throw that ball. Fit in so nicely to Howard Russell, and he can't hang on. Kyla led it with an incomplete pass. His first one of the game. And that that would have crushed cover three, man. We had Howard Russell. He was open. You need to come down with that. Run across the middle. Trying to make up for it. Can't quite. Not going to get the first down. It's going to be fourth and four. But uh, we're going to punt it away here. Play action. Throw at me, you idiot. User pick. Easy reads. The Giving Tree. I also noticed in the comments section, not everybody knows what the easy reads means. All right, the reason I say easy reads when I make a user pick is I read the quarterback, and I'm saying it was so easy for me to get the user pick that I name an easy read, aka a children's book. So if you didn't catch on, that's what that means. So we're going to check down to Saquon Barkley. I am the new check down king. Alex Smith is Kyle Aletta and vice versa. We also, we have put Odell Beckham Jr. in the slot quite a bit because it generates mismatches. That's what it comes down to. We got a mismatch now. Kyle Aletta on the run. Odell Beckham Jr. touchdown. Number two on the day. Another diving catch for Odell. And another well-earned touchdown celebration in the end zone. It's going to be 14 to nothing pending the extra point. Kyle Aletta's put him on the money. And Odell Beckham Jr., you know... If it's off by a little bit, he's making up for it. Diving catches out the ass. 14 nothing, Big Blue. Love to see a few less linebacker interceptions and more interceptions by the cornerbacks and safeties, you know, the D-backs. But uh, unfortunately, the DBs don't like to make plays. But you know who does? Dalvin Tomlinson finds himself in the backfield. Shuts down Shady. I'm getting used to saying that. We're going to blitz Lorenzo Carter, but it's a run. B.J. Goodson trying to wrap up, and he does. Unbelievably manages to do it over an offensive lineman. It is now third and 15. This defense is not even bend, certainly not break. It is a pleasure to watch. And that's a sack. The Roman soldier. Roman Pugh gets after the quarterback. Shuts down Tyrod Taylor or Tyrod. I don't care. Fourth and 24. We get the football back. 
There's Odell again! Secures the catch. That's Tredavious White in coverage. And he just can't handle Odell Beckham Jr. today. That was a tough ball. I really, really, really wanted to throw the wheel there instead of the post. But I just didn't feel like I had the time. I thought I had to get rid of the ball. So we settled on Odell, who is uh, annihilating today. As we're going to find some area with Saquon Barkley. As he comes close to the first down marker. I don't think he got it. And uh, nah, they didn't. If we get a huge block from Evan Ingram here, this is going to be a money play. Saquon Barkley, just fight your way in. He fumbled the ball. Oh, not a good game for Saquon Barkley. Not a good game at all. You can't fumble there. He's fumbled like a, like twice the entire year, and they've been in the last two episodes. What's going on, man? That's that is wild. That's that's crazy. Miraculously, we have been outrushed by the Buffalo Bills today. Even though we've had so many plays like this where we're living in the backfield, LaShawn McCoy has had nowhere to go. Yet, you know, every so often they're going to break one on us, which is super frustrating. We're in the backfield again. Oh my goodness, how? Break it off. Somebody tackle him. LaShawn McCoy, if the AI in this game was any good, would have had maybe 30 or 40 yards downfield if he went to the outside. Decides to play around, cut to the inside. It's now going to be third and four instead of first and ten. You know, plenty of extra room to run. We better shut this down. Lay the hit. Where's my fumble? Saquon continuing uh, to find nothing. The Buffalo Bills are all over our running attack, which means one thing. Welcome to aggressive blocking, carrying. I know we fumbled, but you take the ball away again. You know, who cares? I would probably. You guys would see me scream. But aggressive blocking is the new wave. Their secondary has stars all over the place. I don't even know where to go with the ball here. How about Saquon Barkley? That was a weird animation. I'll take it. Come on, give me something here, Saquon. Up the middle on third and three. Oh, you can't allow the shed there. Kyle Williams has got to be like at least 50 by now. And as uh, Henry Anderson, that makes slightly more sense. Oh no. Oh no, it's Latavius Murray. We don't have a lot of great speed in that linebacking core aside from Lorenzo Carter. Ellis Offer tracks him down, but not after a huge gain. We ran, we blitzed right up the middle and uh, perfect play call, uh, play call to combat that. They only have five passing yards, but uh, that run game's been pretty good. Besides, you know, right there, we shut it down anyway, but it didn't lock, it didn't lock me on. I'm spamming X, give me the tackle. And they're gonna punt the football right back. We've been trying to run the ball here and it just hasn't been working. I need that block. Saquon breaks a tackle. He's just, we need a fullback who's a little bit faster than Erickson because Erickson is one of the slowest players maybe the in the entire NFL. That could have been such a huge game but I had to wait so long for him to get there. His speed is 75. Get Red Ellison in there, somebody. Not Erickson, he's terrible. It's time to pretty much take a shot. Third and eight, 30 seconds to go. There's Odell Beckham Jr. It is the one-man show here in New York. Get out of bounds. We're going to call a timeout. Odell Beckham Jr. has been unstoppable today, and it's only the first half. Six catches, 161 yards here in one half. There's Howard Russell. Kyle Aletta delivers another strike. The hurdle down at the one. Could you imagine? He got into the end zone there. That would have been unbelievable. You guys like when we play smart? I'm putting on a clinic, including a throwaway. 13 for 15. A lot of yards. And that's another touchdown to add to the mix. Evan Ingram. Add that one. 21 nothing. New York Giants pending the extra point. More completions, more yards, more touchdowns for Kyle Auletta. Having a career day, and it's only the first half. It's a blitz from the left, which means the run to the right is the right call. There's the spin back. Saquon Barkley. There he goes. 
Saquon Barkley showcasing the speed and the reason why he's one of the best running backs now in the NFL. Finally, breaking one off, finding the end zone, 71 yards to the house. Oh, come on, this is what we wanted to stop. These chunk games, I mean, granted it's only a little over 10, but that's too many. We can't have him averaging over four yards per carry. That's what this defense is, you know, here to stop. The run. That's a sack fumble. Damon Harrison forces it. Roman Pugh recovers. In what has been a pretty good game for him so far. Damon Harrison with the strip sack. I, I mean, I just love it. We're going to throw that on the run. Howard Russell, what do you mean? How am I not getting an animation there? That's a beautiful throw on third down and six. And uh, instead, we got a punt. That's unbelievable to me. I know it's 28 nothing, and I'm complaining, but would it be a Bengal video if I didn't? This is what you guys come to expect, like that punt somehow going back into the end zone. These are things that frustrates me. I mean, they, they frustrate me, regardless of the score. Tyrod Taylor is 7 for 10 for 33 yards. Not only is he checking down every, you know, every chance he gets, he's barely throwing the football. They have 24 total passing yards. Granted, the run's been, you know, pretty effective. 15 for 65, and that's just with, you know, LaShawn McCoy. Latavius Murray has been pretty effective as well. That's mine. What are you doing? User pick. Easy reads. Lorenzo Carter. Uh, chicka chicka boom boom. That's a children's book. There's Saquon Barkley cutting it back. And that, of course, is a touchdown. His second of the game. And he's letting us know he will get paid. It might not be this offseason, but it's coming up. We're going to have to pay Saquon Barkley uh, during this franchise. And it's going to have to be for a lot of money the way things are looking. 35 nothing now. I told you we were coming in to make a statement. They were low overall. This is what good teams do to bad teams. They destroy them. That's what we're doing. What a defensive back, Tyrod. I'd love to see that. And I guess that counts. I need Morris DuBose to just make an incredible play. Step in front of these. We're getting linebacker interceptions pretty much every game. But those are not the type of turnovers I'm looking for. As far as, you know, what realistic stats would give you. Because you're not going to get all these linebacker interceptions. You're just not. You know, it's going to be the cornerbacks. It's going to be the safeties. That's what I want to see. They're going to punt the football again. It's been a lot of this this game. A lot of just, you know, us having the football. We've been dominating possession. And for good reason. We're just way better. This is free time at this point. We'll return it. Can't really get much. I mean, this team's just playing like an absolute unit. Saquon Barkley's been pretty unstoppable. That was kind of a weird play there on that power row, trying to decide if that outside block was going to get held or not. This is going to be tough for uh, somebody. And there it is. Sterling Shepard. That was just, like, impossible to cover. We kind of had an inside leading streak to, like, post kind of, or, like, fading towards the back post with Evan Ingram from the tight end the way he has this exact route. We had Sterling Shepard on a fade. I, I kind of feel like giving Howard Russell a one-on-one -on -one shot. We're up by a lot. Show me what you got. Howard Russell. Oh, my God, he's done it. Howard Russell. Oh, my goodness. The, the, he never catches those. Just everything is firing on all cylinders today. Things are just going so well. Howard Russell just mosses whoever that weak Bills cornerback was. Granted, it would be, you know, one of the, the worst ones on their team. And he has insane spectacular catch. But I mean, he just usually doesn't come down with those. But he does this time, and it's 42 nothing in what has been an absolute rout of the, the true New York team, if you will, as, of course, the Giants play in New Jersey, as did the Jets. Get after Tyrod. That's almost a sack. How does he get rid of the ball? Just give me the number, man. 
I just want the sack for the stat sheet. That's a pick. Lorenzo Carter with his second of the game and almost his second pick six tried to fit through the gap there. Kind of controlled it by itself, but that's not even a user pick. That's all Lorenzo Carter. As uh, Tyrod Taylor does not have to throw the ball more than four yards at a time. <laughs> Lorenzo Carter stepped right in front and got the pick. I think that's his fifth on the year, it said. It's not cropped correctly because why would it be, right? But uh, unbelievable, Lorenzo Carter. And then Saquon Barkley showing off a little bit of the power there. Not really, but uh, almost up near 150 yards. Or up over nearly. He's definitely near it at 149. Pretty annoying hold on Red Ellison makes it first and goal from the 17. But, I mean, that's, that's aggressive for you. And that's a good block. Saquon Barkley doesn't care about the hold. He just said, that's more rushing yards for me. Takes it up over 150 on the day and a ton more. Can't quite get in the end zone though and they're stacking the box, which means we're probably gonna throw the football on second and goal. We have it at the sack. No, no. Third and goal from the seven. That's another sack, couldn't find anybody. Dante Fowler Jr. All right. I don't know what's going on, but we're uh, we're kind of collapsing here on the goal line. A holding, two sacks in a row after the uh, big Saquon Barkley run. Probably just should have kept it on the ground and say, hey, Saquon, make a play. But regardless, it is 45 nothing. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter that much. Come on. That's gotta be a sack. It's not, he's going one-on-one. -on -one, and that's somehow caught. Morris Dubose was in there, as was Landon Collins and Janoris Jenkins. I don't know who made the play. His name was McDonald. Uh, who even allowed that? Don't let them drive. I want this to be a shutout. Don't let them score. Oh, it's a screen. We're all over it. Damon Harrison. It's a really interesting speed boost there. I'm not complaining. It's going to be third and eight from the 47. This is not what I would call field goal range. Oh, that's that's fit in so perfectly. Tyrod Taylor just threw maybe the best pass of the ball game. And that's saying a lot considering what Kyle Lalette has done. And I know what you're saying. Kyle Lalette has dropped in some, you know, in a bucket. But, I mean, that one that was a great touch pass. Great touch pass. It wasn't the best throw of the day. Kyle Lalette has that to Odell. But it was a good one. That's gotta be a sack. Roman Pugh brings him down. His second sack of the day and a huge loss. Where are you going, Tyrod? Third and 20. We're playing man up. Don't give an inch defense. I do not want to allow any points. Which means pressure on the quarterback could be huge. And that is going to be a actually wide open and complete. They'll, they'll likely take the field goal here and get points on the board. And they do, 45 to three. I really, really wanted the shutout. Ready for this game to be over. We're not taking knees. We are running out the clock with Saquon Barkley and we are stuffing the stat sheet. I don't know how Red Ellison didn't hold that block. I tried to hit the gap and just shoot through and we might've been gone, but I just didn't hold it. Oh my God, Saquon Barkley. What a carry to get over 200. Can you believe this? Look at him go. I mean, that's that's what we have in Saquon Barkley. Just an unbelievable player. And that is going to be the ball game. 26 rushes for 207 yards and two TDs for Saquon Barkley. We'll get to the stats in a minute. Your final score here is 45 to three. And I know, too easy. They're a 74 overall. They're probably the worst team in the entire league. We came in and really made a statement. And uh, it's really hard for me to pick an MVP in this game. Roman Pugh had uh, two sacks, a fumble recovery. Lorenzo Carter had two interceptions. Kyle Lalletta, amazing game. His best game by far, 18 for 22. Four touchdowns, zero interceptions, 307 yards passing as well. Tyrod Taylor was less than good. A perfect passer rating for Kyle Aletta, QB rating, QBR. Saquon Barkley was incredible, 207 yards and two touchdowns. 
It took him a while to get going, but he had some huge plays and then just, you know, racked up in garbage time. Odell Beckham Jr., another one. Seven receptions, 173 yards, and two touchdowns. Six of those, 160 yards and two TDs, all came in the first half. We had some receptions for Saquon as well. Howard Russell made a fantastic play. He was pretty good today. Sterling Shepard with a couple of catches. Evan Ingram uh, with a catch and a touchdown. It's really, really difficult to choose a player of the game here. And I'm not sure that I can. I think this was a huge team win. Damon Harrison with a sack. Of course, B.J. Goodson with an interception. And the, the, you know, Lorenzo Carter also had a touchdown. Forced fumble for Damon Harrison. Um, I swear to God, Roman. I swear to God. He had a touchdown. Did we not get into the end zone? We maybe didn't get into the end zone. I, I thought that he did. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to get my thumbnail and uh, we'll get out of here. What a game, though. I think it's likely that we'll have a player win Offensive Player of the Week. I think it's unlikely that we'll have a player win Defensive Player of the Week, despite, you know, you could give it to uh, a number of players. We have a number of upgrades to spend, and we are going to spend those in this episode as our game next week against the Eagles is going to be big. And Kyle Aletta, unstoppable, clearly. And uh, let's go ahead and check out, let's give a look-see and see who won. And it might not even be out yet, actually. We're going to go ahead and simulate. And uh, we'll see who actually got on the board. And next episode is going to be a big one. Let's check out the news, though. Let's check out some draft stories. Actually, that'll be next episode. We're just going to show the awards as I am very curious to see if we got on the board with anything. Did we get a weekly award? We got both, actually. It's going to be Kyle Aletta on offense. Had an incredible game. And then Lorenzo Carter on defense. Seven tackles, two picks. You could have given to, you know, really anybody. And the Steelers, I guess, you know, uh, they both got AFC Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year, or excuse me, of the week as well. I wonder when the last time that happened was. That two players from the same team in both the NFC and AFC one offensive and defensive player of the week. That'll be interesting to know. But, um, yeah, I mean, Saquon Barkley's won it a lot this year. And Kyle Oletta, he was deserving of this one. It's honestly shocking that Kyle Oletta doesn't have a point there. He just played out of his mind. Out of his mind. Trent Brown, we're going to go pass protector on him. Get him upgrade a little bit as uh, his pass blocking overall goes up, but his actual pass blocking number does not. His run blocking is poor. I will say that. His run blocking is not good. Sterling Shepard will probably just go slot on him uh, as that's his best style. That's the style that fits us the best. What's the scheme fit, though? Possession? Might as well get him, you know, the most XP that he can get. I'm actually down for that. Is his style changing? Not quite. Defensively, though. Only one? Only Lorenzo Carter has a skill point. I find that difficult to believe. And it's another situation that, what do we upgrade on Lorenzo Carter? I think we're going to transition him. A lot of people like the idea, and I like the idea too. Middle linebacker. The finesse move is just really, really high, but he could be the middle linebacker of the future. And he might not be, but he's a very talented player. I think what we're going to do is go pass coverage. We're going to go pass coverage. Doesn't touch his overall just yet, but it should boost his numbers overall. Plus three to zone coverage, making him have 79 zone. He is a dangerous player. That is going to do it for the episode, guys. Next week, we face the 10-4 Philadelphia Eagles at home. This pretty much will decide the division. I mean, if we lose here and then uh, lose to the Jets, which seems unlikely at this point. Our team's playing very, very well. The Eagles, the, the Eagles could win the division. I doubt it. They'll likely make the playoffs, though. I'd like to see them finish at least... Uh, with five losses, hopefully here in week 16. But again, we're going to cover that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Fantastic.